And as you can see, aileron back in place. You can see the uh, the gap we have there gives us more than enough room to uh, move our uh, ailerons. If I were to show you a side view, the amount of movement that you can get from this before it touches is going to be that much, which is more than enough, more than adequate uh, movement. Um, you, you probably couldn't even control the plane at that point. Uh, the most I move my ailerons is about right there. That's that's probably going to be full movement that that I use uh, when I fly. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and do the other one. All right, got uh, both of our ailerons cut out. That one. And the left side, we've got our angles cut. And uh, we're ready for the next step, which is marking uh, for the uh, for the servos. Now, if you take your time cutting out your ailerons, measuring, cutting out, cutting out the angles, should take you 20 to 30 minutes. Um, it's, it's a real simple process. You just got to be uh, just take your time and uh, cut as straight as you can. Next thing you want to do, flip the wing over and we're going to measure for servos and I use um, I go online and I order my servos from a place called uh, Hobby City these are 9 ounce servos uh, Hextronics these servos cost three dollars and sixty five cents um, these are great servos. I've used them in several planes. They're not digital. They're analog, so I think they're like 13 step. Um, for a plane like this, you don't need absolute precision. Um, and what I mean by precision is if you're flying 3D planes, you, you need the digital servos because they, they have a much finer adjustment to them. Uh, but what's nice about these is uh, there's no slop in them. Uh, they come back to center uh, every single time. Uh, so there's not the air on them is very little for three dollars and sixty five cents you can't beat them and what we're going to do is, is uh, we're going to mark our uh, where we're going to put our servo and uh, uh, cut a groove in the uh, foam to, to bring our leads back to the uh, center of the plane and uh, mark it uh, for the horn for the aileron now when I mount my servo, I make sure that I mount it right on the cord of the wing. The thickest part, that's also the, um, the center of lift. So I want the weight of the servo, even though it weighs hardly anything, I, I like to mount it in the thickest part of the wing. That gives me enough depth for the thickness of the servo, plus it also uh, centers the weight right over the, uh, the center of lift on the, uh, on the wing. So I'll show you how I mark these and then we'll cut the hole for that. First thing I do is I'll, I'll take my speed square, line it up with the edge of the uh, of where I made the cut for the aileron and I'll just mark a line up here. This will give me my starting point. Then it's a matter of setting the servo on there and I'll probably want to measure so we're in the center of the cord for this one probably looking at um, three and a quarter would get us there so what you do is you just simply hold your servo on that line measure three and a quarter up from your cut make sure you got that servo nice and straight and all I do is I just draw an outline of uh, the servo body and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with my uh, hot knife and I will cut this this gap out so now we have the markings on our wing for the servo and we'll come back and I'll uh, cut that out with my hot knife 
with my hot knife um, I use the same cutting blade as I did for the uh, pieces of wood that I put in for the battery box. Uh, one thing I do is uh, the depth of the servo. I really don't want to cut any deeper than this. We're actually going to be mounting the servo into the foam like this so it'll be flush with the bottom of the wing. There won't be anything sticking out. But I don't really want to cut any deeper than that because I don't want to make the wing uh, weak. So what I do is I just rest my uh, piece, my servo, onto the blade, take a magic marker and mark it. That way I have a reference point as to how deep I can go. Uh, you can also do this with an X-Acto knife. That way, um, that way you just don't cut too deep. The next thing we'll do is uh, cut the piece out. And here again, it's just a matter of taking your time and uh, you want to cut inside of the lines. We want to try and make the servo fit as tight as possible. So we shove it down in there. It's nice and hot. Cuts through this foam like butter. Take it over to the next line. Pull it straight out. And then we'll continue doing this all the way down until I get the hole cut out. You can also take and measure to make sure that your foam depth is as deep as your uh, as your servo. Here I'm running a little uh, a little shallower than I should, but I can always go back and make that deeper. Uh, I prefer to uh, go back and fix it later like this than to have it too deep or too big to start with. So we'll just take our time. Just cut along the lines here. This, this works really well. If you can uh, go to a garage sale or something and, and find one of these uh, soldering guns, if you plan on doing a lot of work with foam, these are well, well worth the money. You also have these little pieces uh, where you attach the uh, servo, let's say, into uh, into your uh, uh, the fuselage for the screw holes. I just simply heat the gun and push straight down in between those those markings. And then you also have where the uh, the cable runs back to the uh, uh, receiver, and that will be uh, cut out. So let me go ahead and make some uh, final adjustments here. Let's see first if, I, if this fits, if I got the hole in the correct area. Yep, seems, it looks like it'll fit just fine. So the next thing we'll do now is we'll just cut out a little bit for the uh, cable. And then I'll go back and I will take care of uh, making sure that it fits flush with the wing. Then from here, uh, we'll cut uh, a channel back to the center of the wing and that's where we'll run our cables and then uh, make the, the uh, opening for the servo arm a little bit bigger. That'll give it uh, enough room for the servo to move back and forth. Okay, I've taken a couple seconds to uh, clean the hole out to the right depth and is, as you can see, if you put the wing on edge the servo is absolutely flat with it and uh, it fits in there nice and tight. We'll, when, we get, uh, when we get done covering the, the uh, wing, we'll go back and uh, mount the servos. We don't want to mount the servos before we uh, do the wing. So, And we'll use either a little bit of epoxy or a little bit of white latex caulking to mount it in there. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this hole out up here. Uh, for the ser servo arm, uh, enlarge it just a little bit and that will give it room for that servo arm to move around in there freely. You don't want it binding up on the foam. So we'll do that and then we'll uh, cut the next uh, servo out on the next uh, other side of the wing and then uh, I'll cut a channel across here uh, to bring the uh, servo leads to the uh, center of the fuselage.